Continuing on with section 1.2, this is 1.2 C, and I'm on page 82, visualizing domain and range, and obviously using the word visualizing, we're going to be looking at uh, graphs and getting an idea of what the uh, domain and range look like on a graph on the XY axis. So if you look on the left hand side of the page on page 82 and you've got that half circle, notice what they do with the domain. They call it the x-coordinate or the input and they also say it's found on the horizontal axis <clears throat> so left or right and the range would be what you get out of the input and that would be your y values so for instance if you had f of x and you said that equals the square root of x plus 4 now you're going to be able to put in all kinds of different x values and when you put in an x value it's going to add 4 to it, you're going to take the square root of it, and it will give you your domain, or your horizontal value. And therefore, you're given two points. You're given an x value, so if you make your handy-dandy little table, you've got your x value and your y value. If you put a number in here for your x value, so at this time, well, let's put 12 in there, it's going to spit out 12 plus 4 is 16, square root of 16 is... 4. So it's going to give me um, a y value of 4. Okay? Which will be that point right there. So there is our point 12, 4. Okay, so if we keep putting in values for x, let's say we put in um, 3, it's going to give us the square root of 7, which is going to be a number a little less than um, 3, so it might go right there. Let's say we put in 0, and that would give us 2. And let's put in, well, in fact, I guess what, I'm, what I need to do is uh, 3 square root of 7 would actually be 3 square root of 7 would be closer to 9 up here and then I put in uh, 0 and it gave me a 2 and let's put in a negative 2 and that would give me a square root of 2 so at negative 2 square root of 2 is going to be right in there and you continue on um, until it gets to negative 4 and I put that in there and I get 0 so negative 4 0 okay that is the graph of that radical right there so this is going to be my domain, this is going to be my range, and then I can go ahead and graph that. And one of the things I know is that if I put a number less than negative 4 in my graph, so let's say for instance I put in a negative 5, and I add 4 to that, I get the square root of negative 1, which is an imaginary number, which means I cannot graph it at this point. Later on we'll be graphing these, but right now we're not. So I get negative 1. So that is not a real number, so that doesn't work. So I can't go past negative 4 for my domain. So I can be up to negative 4, but I can't go past it, and I can go into infinity that way. Which means my range, if I can't go past negative 4 here on my x or on my horizontal axis, I can't go below 0 here, can I? Because if I put a negative in, it would give me a negative radical, which does not take me down here. So um, my limit for my domain, my point for my domain, would have to be I can't go any further than 0. I can be at 0, therefore the kind of squared off, and I can go in a positive direction into infinity. So this is my domain, and that's my range for that particular 
drawing. Now, if you look at B um, on the bottom of page 82, so there is the uh, graph on the bottom of page 82 of um, x cubed minus x. Now, notice um, what happens on our left to right, our domain. Our domain is going to be everything left into infinity and right into infinity, or you could just say all real numbers, okay? Because as this goes up, it's going to go further and further this way, and as this goes down, it's going to go further and further that way, okay? So therefore, my x values um, are infinity. Okay, now look what happens to my um, up and down. As my x value goes further this way, what happens to my y value? It goes up. And as I go negative, my y value goes down. So it also is positive and negative infinity or all real numbers. Okay, so let's look at this next one here. Let me get that out of the way. And this is on the top of page 83. And there's two more here. Okay, so let's look at C. We have in uh, C, let's see, left to right. What happens when we go left to right? Well, we go negative infinity this way. And look what happens when we get over here. We get closer and closer and closer to 2, but we never get there. That's what this represents. It represents that we never get to 2. So our domain on the left-hand side means we go to negative infinity, and we go to 2, but we never go to 2, so therefore we have it rounded. Now, when we look at the right side of 2, this blue line here, it never, it gets closer and closer to 2 as y gets larger, but it never gets there. And this line goes into infinity. So what we have for this one is we have a 2 and positive infinity. And that's a union. They're both part of the equation. They're, yeah, they're both part of the equation, so they're together. So we can either use numbers less than 2 or numbers greater than 2, one or the other. Okay, so when we look at the y values, the, uh, let me get rid of this, the um, range, look what happens here. How far down can I go? I can go into infinity, and I can go up to infinity. But the problem I run into is this red line right here means that my y value can never hit zero. See what happens? As my y value or as my x value gets bigger and bigger, my y value gets closer and closer to zero, but it never gets to zero. As my y value gets bigger and bigger, my x value gets smaller and smaller and smaller, but this line never crosses my x line. So that means that my range, my y value, is going to go from negative infinity to zero. So it's going to go from down here, negative infinity, to zero, but it never gets to zero. And it's going to union with zero. Because again, it never, it never touches zero here. Never touches zero here, but it goes up into infinity. So we're going to make that infinity. So we've got negative infinity, zero, unions, zero, positive infinity. Okay. Same kind of thing happens over here um, on this one. Um, notice from left and right, as it goes up, it gets further this way. As it goes up, it gets further this way. So again, my domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity, or all real numbers. And what happens to my y? It comes down here to negative 4, 
In fact, it even touches negative 4 in two places, and then it goes up into infinity this way. So my range then is negative 4 inclusive to positive infinity. So that would be my range there. And finally, bottom of page 83, we've got uh, applications of functions, the speed of sound and air. They give us a formula, and that formula is a function, speed to time, and the formula is 1087.7 times the square root of 5t plus 2457 all over 24. 57. Okay, so there's my function. And they're saying S is feet per second. Find the speed of sound and air when the temperature is 0, 32, 70, and negative 10. All they're asking you to do is find S of 0, S of 32, S of 70, and S of negative 10. So all you're going to do is take 0 and plug it in here and get your answer. And that will be um, your y value. So put 32 in there. So 32 is your x, and then your answer will be your y value or your range. So you're putting in a domain and it spits out a range. So that's pretty much all there is to that one. So that ends 1.2 completely 1.2 A, B, and C.